Hey guys, so it's finally my weekend, and I've had time to pull Kenich and do a lot of playtesting with him. There are some things that I'm sure you are wondering about Kenich, such as how necessary Emily actually is, and how he does with Farina instead. So, I compared Kenich, both at C0 and C2, in different team setups with Emily, as well as different team setups with Farina instead. And as you'll see, I have the footage playing for these comparisons. Just keep in mind that my Farina is, is C4, while my Emily is only C0 R1. The current Abyss is not a good testing environment due to both bosses have on top half having massive denture resistance, so instead I did single target tests against the Overworld Aeon Blight Drake, as it has about 1.2 million HP, and then I did AoE multi-wave tests in that Inazuma domain that has a bunch of Rift Wolves. And then, I did still do a test in the current Abyss, but only with C2 Kanich with just one team for Emily and one for Freena. But keep in mind the denture resistance puts the Emily team at even farther of a dis disadvantage. Before I show you that, there are just a couple of things from my pre-release analysis that I want to follow up on. Firstly, in my weapon calcs, I had underestimated Kanich's signature weapon. I was averaging its stacks at 4 instead of the full 6. But the weapon stacks so fast that it's pretty much always going to be at full stacks, especially in an Emily team, since it can stack from our field. With the weapons, I also completely forgot that Beacon, Dia's weapon, exists. I've added it to my calcs now, and assuming you get both stacks for the full 40% attack buff, it's Kanicha's third best weapon behind an R5 Serpent Spine. But that's assuming you maintain full stacks on Serpent Spine, which is easy to do if you are using Toma, but if you aren't, you're going to have a low stacks due to not only getting hit by enemies, but also from the self burning damage whenever that happens. So if you aren't using Toma, Beacon will be Kanich's second best weapon, but it is still a huge 19% behind his signature, so Kanich's weapon is definitely worth picking up if you have to spare Primo Gems. Personally, I'm not pulling his weapon, because I only have about 350 Intertrined Fates left, I want to save back up. Now another thing I want to follow up on is the source of our field pyro application. In my previous video, I said that there really isn't any reason to use jungling over Toma unless you're using Farina. And I stand by that. In fact, I now think she's not worth using over Toma even with Farina. Jungling just does not do very meaningful damage with Kanich, since she needs to use deep wards. Plus, you have to use her after Bennett, so she's either going to prevent you from using Emily's burst with Bennett buff, or lower your Bennett uptime on Kenich. But on top of that, she's revolving around Kenich and not the enemy, and since Kenich is sliding around so much, Shangling can end up just missing a lot of her hits with him. So overall, you get extremely similar, if not better, damage with Toma, while also having a very strong shield, so I really just can't justify using Jungling for any reason. And on that note, I know some people were wondering about Dea instead of Toma, but there's just straight up no reason to do this whatsoever. Toma provides all the benefits you would use Dea for, but better. Her interruption resistance buff only lasts like 8 seconds, and her damage reduction it doesn't actually stop you from taking damage which is very important if you are using Serpent Spine. Dea's Pyro application is also tied to enemies being inside her circle, whereas Toma doesn't have any problem like that. The only advantage Dea actually has over Toma is, she doesn't need to burst, and she takes a bit less fill time, but a C4 Toma on Favonius and an ER Sense should not be having energy issues to begin with, and the slightly less fill time that Dea takes isn't nearly enough to make up for all the problems that she has which Toma doesn't, so there's really just no reason to use her, unless you don't have a C4 Toma. So for that R-Field Pyro Applier, I really think you should just use Toma most of the time, and bring out Venti when you really need grouping. I didn't get to showcase Venti since I don't have him, but I think it should go without saying why he's the best option for groupable AoE content. Lynette did also prove to be a solid and competent option as well, but I didn't feel like she was better than Toma, so I'd rather just use the shielder. And now circling back to the question of Emily vs Farina, as you should see in the footage playing, even with Farina at C4 and Emily at C0 or R1, the Emily team variants are clearing an equivalent time as Farina, 
So I think it's reasonable to conclude that if they were at equal investment, such as a C1 Farina versus C0 R1 Emily, or C2 Farina versus C1 R1 Emily, or even C0 versus C0, the Emily teams would be a lot faster than Farina. So if you are a dedicated Kniech's main and want to optimize his performance, you definitely want to get your hands on Emily if you haven't already. And that's all I have to say. For the remainder of the video, I'll just let the rest of the comparisons play out. If you liked the video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and comment if you haven't already. Thanks and goodbye. Fire. Everybody stand back! Target acquired! 
I got him cold.